Welcome to Raiders on the Record, the podcast featuring Hastings High School Athletics. I'm Athletic Director Trent Hansen. My colleague Tim Hanneberg and I work together to bring you the stories of Raiders sports. We are thrilled to share conversations with the athletes, coaches, and alumni that represent Raider Nation. Check back weekly and be sure to share this podcast with your friends in the Raiders Network. Molly Kateria is a junior at Hastings High School and will be a 2023 Raider graduate. During her time at Hastings High School, she has participated in cross country, Nordic skiing, and track and field. In cross country, she's a four-year letter winner and was, in, and was named captain during her junior year. In Nordic skiing, she's a four-year letter winner and a two-time captain. Finally, in track and field, she was a letter winner during her sophomore year. By the time Molly graduates high school, she will earn 14 varsity letters between her three sports. Molly is also involved in numerous clubs and activities, such as Link Crew, Student Council, is an FCA huddle leader, a writing center coach, youth and government, Red Cross Club, and the Horticulture Club. Throughout the interview, Molly hammers a connection between sports and fun, and why relationships made through sports are critical for success. All right, so here we are with Molly Kateria. Molly, to start the podcast, we like asking a couple icebreaker questions just to get you know, just to get to know you a little, a little bit better. So the first one is three of your favorites. You could pick any of these that you want. Uh, you could pick three of each if you really wanted to. So kind of your choice. So your favorite movie, your favorite food, your favorite artist, your favorite author, or your favorite time of the year. Um, I'd have to say my favorite movie is Captain America or any Captain America movies. Um, my favorite food is any type of pasta. And my favorite time of year is the fall because football. Wonderful. Next one. If you could go visit a beach or a mountain, which one would you like? Do you like sweet or salty foods? And do you prefer dogs or cats? Um, beach or mountain, it would definitely depend on what type of year it is here, um, uh, or what type, like time of year it is here. Mm-hmm. But right now I'd say beach. Um, I'd need an equal balance of sweet or salty and then dogs all the way. Nice. Last one here for the icebreakers. Three words that you think describe you. Um, I'd say enthusiastic, um, kind and, uh, empathetic nice all right so we got some background info on you let's get a little bit more background info what was it like growing up uh were you did you guys always live in hastings um brothers or sisters talk about your mom and your dad grandparents uh the kateria family is a pretty big and uh well-connected family here in town so if you want to give a little more background on your family as well uh go for it so just give us uh, a snapshot of what it looked like for you growing up here um, yeah, uh, I have a little brother named Finn. He's a freshman this year. Um, I grew up really close with my entire family, both sides, mom and dad. Um, we have always lived in Hastings, um, just because that's where my dad's family lives. Um, like you said, there's a lot of us, so I'm surprised we're all as close as we are, but we always have fun and we always get along really well. And it's nice to just have a big, close family. It's really it's really good to have that support system. For sure. Talk a little bit about the elementary school. So we send this out to our elementary school teachers and our middle school teachers as well. We try and encourage them to listen to this. So talk about the elementaries that you attended here in town, uh, or maybe just one elementary. And then, um, and then maybe any teachers that kind of really made a big impact on your life as well uh, throughout elementary and middle school. Yeah, um, I went to Kennedy Elementary. Um, I had some great teachers. Miss Arnold for fourth grade was really nice, really fun. Um, same with Miss Mitchell for, I believe I had her for second grade, maybe third. Um, but yeah, they're all just really nice. They all like, you know, just encourage you to do what you liked and focus on, you know, having fun and not putting too much pressure on yourself to get good grades and all that. For sure. And then you attended our Hastings Middle School. Any teachers that stuck out uh, at the middle school? Um, 
Miss Bram Brammer was really, really good. I really loved her. She really got me into um, English, and that's now my favorite subject. I'm thinking of maybe pursuing something in that um, field. Just really like English now, and Miss Brammer was probably my favorite. Wonderful. That's two podcasts in a row that she got a shout out. So that's pretty neat. Uh, <laughs> next one then for you. We focus a lot about sports here on uh, this kind of podcast. So talk about your sports journey. What kind of sports did you play growing up? Did you try a wide variety of sports? Uh, did anything kind of really stick with you at a young age? And I usually like stopping around sixth grade. I feel like when we get to uh, those upper middle school years, we get a little more serious with sports. So uh, talk about those sports growing up, maybe your earliest sports memory. It could just be playing catch with your dad in the backyard. Maybe watching, a, uh, you, you talked about football season, so maybe a big football game, or maybe you guys had a tradition around watching football every Sunday. So talk about your earliest sports memory and then what it looked like for you growing up with sports. Um, I've always grown up with sports. I think my like earliest memories of sports is watching my older cousins play, going to their games. Um, my family really likes the wild too, so we'll go and like watch the wild a bunch. Um, I grew up, I tried t-ball. I think everybody tried t-ball at one point in their life. Um, and then I did soccer for a long time. And when I got to middle school, it was a hard decision between running and soccer. And I was told that I was, you know, built for running. So I just went with running and never looked back and stopped doing soccer. And I can say that's probably one of the, the best and worst decisions I've ever made. Nice. So then we get uh, into our seventh and eighth grade year. Talk about what sports you started playing again in seventh and eighth grade. And then if you got brought up to maybe the high school level uh, with any of those sports, you could go for that too. And then once again, stop at about ninth grade. I like kind of breaking it down year by year as well and talking about your sports journey in high school as well. So like I said, starting in seventh grade, any other sports you played or what sports did you got? Did you get more interested in and get take a little more serious here when you got to that seventh and eighth grade level? Yeah, so I... Um, in seventh grade, I joined the Nordic team and my whole family downhill skis, they're all alpine skiers. So I tried something different and I just really liked it. It was something different. It was a, it was a nice workout, you know, um, I just never heard of it before. And then obviously the legendary D is the coach. So it was just always really fun to have him. Um, and then by still running at the middle school, seventh grade year, and then my eighth grade year, for cross country, I was brought up to varsity and I ran varsity with um, Megan Madsen, Bree Amundsen, Brooke Erickson, Linnea Urban, um, Abby Siebenhaller, Autumn Madrigula, and Liv Madsen. And that was probably my favorite team I've ever been on just because we were so close and they really made me like the sport. And if it wasn't for that team, I probably wouldn't be in cross country right now. And then in eighth grade, did you continue with Nordic? Uh, anything else in the spring as well? Um, yeah, eighth grade, I did Nordic um, varsity again that year. And that was also a really fun team. Um, and then in the spring, I did track at the middle school. I didn't do it at the high school. Wonderful. All right. So then we get to ninth grade. Let's go year by year, season by season. So we start out with cross country here. You're at the beginning of your ninth grade year. Talk about anybody else on the team that really stuck out. Anything major highlights from your ninth grade year, that fall season? And then we'll go from fall to winter to spring again. Also add in any kind of accomplishments that went along with that season. Um, if there's like an all-conference, if there's like a captain um, honor that went along with it as well. Anything like that, that for uh, each year. Yeah, so um, ninth grade year, cross country. Um, I, just, I don't really remember specific times or races. I just know that I had a lot of fun with the team. Like for me, like I think when I first started running eighth grade year, I was kind of more focused on the times because I was running with Megan Madsen who pushed me to go faster. But I really just started focusing on like making connections with the team and becoming really close with them. So I'd say honestly, my favorite memories is just like conference race and like the race um, in Owatonna where we would go to the Nike outlet after and then McDonald's like just fun team bonding, things like that. Team dinners are always a huge, like, huge thing for me. They're always so fun. Um, I started to take cross country a little less seriously and more focused on Nordic um, because we had a really solid team for Nordic that year and we were thinking that 
we had a shot at winning conference. Unfortunately, we got second by one point. Um, but we were really close, and it was really it was a really good team, and we're really proud of ourselves for that. And it was it was fun. And then track, unfortunately, couldn't do that in my ninth grade year because of COVID, and that was a a big a big disappointment because I was I never really had done track before. I didn't really know what it was about. But my sophomore year, I kind of found out that it's my it's my favorite sport that I do now. So wonderful. So in tenth grade, let's go through that again. Um, I'm assuming you played all the same sports again. So let's go through each uh, season again. And uh, once again, any kind of accomplishments, team or individual that went along with that year as well. Um, tenth grade year, um, was kind of rough just because COVID. You know, like really had a huge impact on my mentality and my motivation. So that year for sports didn't go like spectacular. I mean, I still had decent times and I was still having fun with the teams, but it was kind of just something to keep me busy and keep me out of the house. Cross country was still fun. We still had a really fun team. Um, Nordic, our team was kind of changing a little bit, but I was made the captain at the end of the year for that. So that was really fun. Um, and for track, was probably my favorite sport that year. It was just so fun. I made so many more new friends and I kind of found what my event was and what I like to do. Um, yeah, it was probably my favorite. And again, I had D wall for every single sport. Mm -hmm. So it was always fun. And what events did uh, pop for you for track that year? Um, the four by eight was really four fun. I, eight. The 800 is kind of my, <laughs> found out it's kind of my thing. Awesome. Do you do any uh, field events or anything? I don't, but I'm thinking this yeah. year I might try jumping. Sweet. Awesome. And then right now we're in your 11th grade year. Uh, you're in the middle of your cross country season. So you give us a little uh, brief uh, kind of talk about your uh, season right now. How's it going? Uh, any, once again, any accomplishments that go along with your cross country season right now, uh, what you're looking forward to uh, the end of the season as well, anything you're looking forward to there. And then Maybe preview Nordic and track as well here in your 11th grade year. Um, so unfortunately this season I trained all summer and then at the end of the summer I was concussed. So I missed out on three weeks of, you know, training and um, so I fell far behind and then like getting back from a concussion was also really hard because I don't know how hard I can push myself or how far I can go without feeling, you know, sick or something. But I was able to like, get pretty decent times, not anywhere near what I was hoping for this season, but there's always next year. And like I said, it's more about the team than the times for me. I just had a lot of fun with the team. We, It's different now that I'm like the upperclassman on the team. So it's cool to see like just everybody just forming good friendships and becoming closer. Um, what I'm really excited for about this end of the season is seeing Ty Bush go to state, hopefully see him run in sections hopefully he'll make it to state which I have no doubt in my sure. mind that he will hmm. um you know it's also D Wells last year coaching and that's kind of been bittersweet for all of us especially the juniors because he couldn't wait one more year until he graduated mm -hmm. but um you know it's kind of an end of an era here and we'll, we'll all miss him a lot and so I guess I'm just really looking for this Nordic looking forward to this Nordic season so I can just make the best of it for him and for my team. Um, the Nordic team has changed a lot since we've um, had Linnea Urban graduate. Um, but I just, I don't know, hopefully Nordic will go well. I'm excited for it to see what I can do, what times I can try and get. Um, in track, I'm so excited for um, because I'm really like driven to get PRs, better times, better races in the 800. So yeah, it's really exciting. Nice. That's wonderful. So Mr. Hansen always challenges the coaches here to think about and to explain why we coach and why do we get into coaching? Why is it important to us? So we like flipping that question around on you guys. So Molly, why do you think you play so many sports? Why do you think running and Nordic and all those kind of high level conditioning sports really popped with you? So why do you think you play sports and why is sports important to you in your life? I mean, I started running because I was told I had long legs. So mm -hmm. I was just told that I was fast and that I would be good at it. So I tried it. 
you know, who really enjoys running? Like nobody really enjoys it. But I think what makes it fun is that the team gets to choose like how they how they make it. So like if you want to complain about having to run the whole time, then you can do that. But we we make it fun. We find games to play during our runs. Like we go on adventures like this past um, race we had at St. Croix Bluffs. We went and jumped in the river after after our race. Like we just we find fun ways to do that. And I just think I run and ski just because of the team. And I just really enjoy being around a bunch of people who like to be active and like to stay in shape. Um, it's just a good way to, um, I don't know, stay in shape and have fun. Wonderful. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. Next two questions for you, Molly. Very similar. If you could kind of break them apart, that'd be great. You might already talked about them too, but um, if you want to add anything in there, uh, that'd be great too. So First one is your best or your most rewarding thing about being a Hastings athlete. So like I said, the best or most rewarding thing about being a Hastings athlete. The second question is your favorite moment or experience being a Hastings athlete. Um, I would say my best, most rewarding thing about participating um, like in Hastings athletics is just like I'm in sports that people don't typically do. So when I say that I'm a runner or a Nordic skier, they're like, oh my gosh, like I can never run like you do. And it's just really like, even though I'm not running the times that I feel like I should be, people still recognize the fact that it's a hard sport and that you put a lot of work in to just be able to do it anyway. So it's really nice to have people recognize the fact that you're, you're working and you're putting in your best, even like, even though it's not what you think it should be, you know? Wonderful. What do you yeah. think your favorite moment has been uh, as a high school athlete here at Hastings? I would just say like um, bus rides, team dinners, like all of those are just so fulfilling and so fun. And um, those will definitely be memories I'll have like in cherish for the rest of my life. Just making friends with all different grade levels, different types of people. Like that's just, it's so rewarding. Um, my favorite moment or experience would probably be like jumping in the river or, you know, um, playing football at team dinners is definitely the best. Wonderful. Once again, the next question, Mr. Hansen loves challenging our coaches with how we define success. We're flipping it around on you athletes. How would you define success? And what does success mean to you uh, as a Hastings high school athlete? Um, I would define success as just um, being happy with like doing something like doing something and being happy, like finding happiness in something you're doing, like even if it's not an ideal situation, like being successful to me just means being happy and finding finding something you love to do and holding on to that. Um, and I found success in that by, you know, realizing that sports aren't all about like your times or how fast you are, if you're the best or not. It's about what you do to get there, um, what you go through to get there. Again, the team aspect of it, just there's so much more to it. Um, and so I think I've had a pretty successful um, high school career so far because of those reasons. Nice. So you probably already named them. You've had kind of one major coach throughout your high school career so far. <laughs> So if you want to talk about them a little bit more and expand on it, uh, that'd be fine. I don't, I don't want to assume that's you're going to be your, be your answer for this one, but uh, I got a good guess and a good hunch on it. So who do you think one of the best coaches you've played for or run for or um, as you've, you've had throughout your high school career? And it could be someone uh, in the elementary or the middle school as well. And why do you, why'd you pick this person? What's some stuff that they have taught you, lessons, character skills, something that really resonated with you or stuck with you? And something that you're going to use the rest of your life. So who do you think that best coach is that you've played for? Um, so I think you're right. Do you all, um, mm -hmm. and Mr. Sandcamp, both were just, they're just so encouraging. Um, they try and, you know, like this year when I was concussed, they told me that I had to put, like, it was hard for me because I tried running with my concussion and I wanted to ignore the fact that I had it, but they told me that, you know, your health is more important than, running right now so they just they always put the runner first and not and not the running first um 
which is really nice. They are so encouraging and so supportive and they, they find ways to make it fun. d crazy and he's, uh, he just always makes it fun. And Mr. Sandcamp's the most supportive coach I've ever had. And he's just the best at that too. So it's just really, and they work really well together and they balance each other out really nicely. And they always make running a fun experience and Making running a fun experience is a hard thing to do. So they they really, they do good. They are, they're fun. For sure. You named a bunch of girls already. You kind of named that, that ninth grade year when you had a really good crew, or maybe it was eighth grade. Uh, eighth think, grade yeah, year, sorry eighth. about that. Yep. So you had a really big, fun crew of girls for cross country. Uh, so it'd be really hard to pick one, and, but you could pick one for each sport you wanted, or maybe name a handful of girls again, if you really wanted to. But who do you think one of your favorite or your most valuable teammates is that you've run with or skied with? Um, once again, someone that really encouraged you or maybe pushed you or just taught, really taught you something that really stuck with you throughout your uh, years of competing as a high school athlete. Um, so for running, I would have to say probably Nolan Myers um, and Megan Matson, um, Emma Kelly, Autumn Madricula. Just all those girls really, or, and Nolan, Nolan's not a girl, <laughs> sorry, Nolan. Um, but all of them just really just made me think about, you know, the team aspect again, but also like, I know when I was running with Emma, Autumn, and um, Megan, they all pushed me to go faster, even though I didn't want to, they just set the pace and, you know, I'd have to stick with them. Um, and Nolan... So I think the role that he played was really just kind of like holding the team together, like the glue of the team. And when he left, it was kind of hard for all of us to adjust. And we, we still miss him. Um, but we, we had a fun season, even though he wasn't here. Um, but yeah, I just think that they're all valuable in their own way. They all just pushed me to, you know, do better. For sure. With the, with the sports you play, this next one, maybe there isn't an opponent that you really look forward to playing. Maybe it is an event. You named the Owatonna event, um, the, the cross-country meet, because there's maybe not so much of the running down in Owatonna, the other stuff that went along with it. You said going to the outlet mall, going to McDonald's, that kind of thing. But maybe if there is an opponent, you can name them. And maybe if there's an opponent for a certain sport, you can name them. But name an opponent or an event that you really look forward to every single year uh, once again, you could pick each individual sport if you wanted to, or just name one kind of in general. Um, something that, once again, really look forward to playing. Uh, maybe in a, a, um, a team that really brought the best out of you or something that you really just circled on the calendar every single year and always look forward to. Um, yeah, so I think for every sport, she's actually my teammate, E.C. Atkins. She always pushes me to do better, and she's like the person I try and keep up with and the person that I try and, you know, beat because she just she's such a hard worker and um she really pushes me to do better so I guess I could consider her as my opponent I guess <laughs> to try and push me to do better but yeah it's always helpful to have a teammate like that just kind of pushing you to do better for yourself and I guess in some cases it could be you're pushing them as well especially in our sports that are solely based on times Mm -hmm. wonderful last couple questions then for you molly you've had a lot of varsity experience here as an athlete so far you're only in your 11th grade year but if you could give parents or coaches two pieces of advice from your experience what do you think they would be and why um i would say just not take it so seriously um i just i know i've found a lot more fun and just you know again having fun with the team and just um, making the friendships versus actually doing the sport and the sports are fun and I do enjoy the sports and um, but I think that putting pressure too much pressure on your kid or your athlete um, just to get the get a better time would be number one that might not be the reason they're in the sport it could be for the team like me so um, I would just say like just be aware that there's more to running than just the times or skiing than just the times. Wonderful. Same kind of question. Now for your peers, you talked about being a younger athlete on the cross country team and really looking up to those older girls. And then 
kind of, it kind of flips on you, you know, when you, when you look around and you're the oldest one. So looking at those younger athletes on your, on the teams and, and those younger girls coming up in the sports as well. So if you could give those younger athletes two pieces of advice from your years of experience as a varsity athlete in three different sports, what would those pieces of advice be and why? Um, again, just have fun. And I know I've kind of stuck with that theme throughout the whole thing. I kind of haven't really been pushing the narrative of trying your best and, you know, doing good in the sport. And I think you should, and I think you should take the sport, you know, seriously. And if you really like it and you really think you can do well, then you can and push yourself to do good. Um, like you can get those times if you want them and, but just make sure that you don't take it too seriously. Make sure you leave the time for fun and make sure you leave um, time for your team. And, you know, um, seeing your times go down is really fun too. Like um, it's really rewarding to see that. So um, just make sure you're always working hard, always making the best of it. Um, and yeah, just have fun. Wonderful. Molly, that's all I got for you. The last couple of minutes here are all about you. Any shout outs you want to uh, give out? Um, anything else you want to add? Anything else I didn't talk about that you want to throw in there? Uh, the last couple of minutes are, are yours and, and the mic is all yours. Um, yeah, just a couple of shout outs. Um, Lindsay Matheson, one of my best friends and I've met through running and become closer with through running. And I will always be grateful for cross country because of that. Um, Linnea Urban, I'm not sure if I already mentioned her, but she was also another huge contributor to my high school career and just pushing me and being a huge role model for me. Um, Linnea Hansen too, through track. She was also another really big one. And just, you know, just all the teammates I've had, and they've all like had an impact a certain way. And it's, it's really great. My team now that I have, the girls cross country team, I love them and they're great and they're a great team. I'll miss them so much after the season ends, but um, I just want to thank them for a great season and it was amazing. And D Wall, I hope that we made your last season memorable and we hope that you had fun. Um, and we'll always thank you for just being our coach and enjoying it as much as we do. Awesome. Thank you, Molly. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much. Oh, 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 oh,